valuables belonging to the Siberian white movement were kept here in the Abalak monastery. It is now being restored. Have you found a lot of metal? Yes, we have lots of. I find this quite intriguing. There is a lot of metal here because insurgents taking part in the 1921 peasant revolt were executed here by this wall. One finds gold, gems and human bones here, all in one place. Colonel Alexander Petrushin of the Federal Security Service, now retired, has spent a good deal of time in search of Kolchak's gold. His job gave him access to secret archives and transcripts of interrogations relating to Archbishop Irinak of Tobolsk. According to his testimony, when the Red Army was approaching Tobolsk in August 1919, Kolchak had ordered that the Siberian gold be evacuated immediately. In October 1919, crates with a valuable cargo were loaded from this pier onto a steamship called the Permiak. Early winter and the resulting cold weather compelled the convoy to halt near the village of Tunderno, close to Surgut. Escorts unloaded the valuable crates and hid them deep in the woods. It is not known where the cargo was left. Those treasures, including the priceless liberation of Siberia medals, have not yet been found. From Omsk, the Golden Train went east on the Trans-Siberian Railway through Irkutsk. All of Russia's railways converge at the port of Vladivostok in the country's east. It's situated 9,000 kilometers away from Moscow. The Trans-Siberian Railway terminates in the city. One theory has it that part of Russia's gold reserve reached the city after Kolchak's execution. This picture shows Czechoslovak legionnaires waiting for their turn to embark on ships in the port of Vladivostok. 42 transport ships took some 70,000 officers and men of the Czechoslovak Legion to Europe. Members of the Czechoslovak Army Corps were carrying no arms as they embarked on ships, only personal belongings. But even they were not allowed to exceed a certain weight limit. This seems to suggest that there was very little room in those ships. Therefore, I cannot honestly believe that the content of scores of other railway cars could have been accommodated there. But this picture from the archives of the Military Institute in Prague shows legionnaires sitting on large crates as they prepare for embarkation. And another photo shows large packages on the ship's bow. What's in them? the answer is unlikely to be found. Enthusiastic treasure hunters in Vladivostok and all along the route of the gold train believe that part of Kolchak's reserve is hidden somewhere here. Sergei Matvienko, founder of a motor club, began looking for the gold in 2005 after he met Viktor Shumov, a local resident. Shumov promised to take Sergei to a cave where he said he had found gold bullion with the coat of arms of the Russian Empire embossed on it. Sergei and his friends received official papers authorizing them to do excavation work at the site of the find. Sergei then made arrangements for an expedition to go there. There was a hillside waste at the site. We used a small excavator to dig up stone after stone. In the end, the excavator reached a flat surface made of cut stone. It was easy to see that it had been made by hand. Wow! It seems we can get in there. We could find gold. Shumov told me that he had seen stacks of gold bullion and paintings in tubes and even some flags. He assumed those were paintings because the tubes were quite long. But he touched nothing for fear of triggering a blast. Sergei Matvienko's team found nothing after two months of work. Later, other treasure hunters literally collapsed the cave to the ground. Viktor Shumov, the man who found the cave in the first place, 
died under mysterious circumstances. This raises the suggestion that he may indeed have found something valuable. But whether that was part of the Russian Empire's gold reserve is still unknown. Looking for Kolchak's gold is something of a hobby for Motor Club members. Some evidence suggests that it is here in the Primoria territory, in the Olgosk region or in the Chiguya region. We are going to do more excavation work in the near future. In 1920, the Bolsheviks returned some of the gold reserve that the whites had taken from the state bank's Kazan branch. When all is said and done, it is a significant fact that the gold returned to this building after its Siberian journey. It took several days to bring it here by trams and motor vehicles. In October 1920, the gold reserve was sent to Moscow. In the early 20th century, trains carrying part of the gold reserve of the Russian Empire went on a journey across the country. Every now and then, the fascination with Kolchak's treasure fades, only to fire up again with renewed vigor. Many living along the route of the gold train and in many other parts of Russia claim they know where the gold bullion is hidden. Setbacks notwithstanding, these treasure hunters are determined to go on with the search. The mystery of the gold's disappearance has remained unsolved for nearly a hundred years.